right, welcome to the third and final video in the vacuum series. We're gonna be checking out how to make a synth patch and a bass patch. Both are featured in the background music of the intro for this video series. So if you don't remember what that is, go ahead and check it out. Obviously, I'm gonna preview them before we make them right now, but this is gonna be a hands-on tutorial. So hopefully you have the synth by now. If you don't, check it out on Plugin Boutique, download the demo, get your hands on it, and let's build some sound together. This synth is perfect for making this type of music. It's warm. It's it's gritty. It's everything we love about vacuum style synthesis. The circuitry emulation is top notch. I'm excited to get into it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be making the lead sound from one of the projects I made to show off the vacuum synthesizer. This is the lead sound we're going to be making from this project. So specifically this lead right here. It's actually super easy to do, especially when you're using an init patch from the vacuum synth. So what I did was just, I went ahead and copied the filtering system, the compressor and the reverb there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that from this channel and just drop a new instance of vacuum on there. This is the only way to get to the initial patch. There isn't uh, any way to get to say the default here from this menu. And so the best way to do it is just to drop it right on the channel. And actually it sounds really good in the lead role. So let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> so it already sounds really good, but what we're going to do is take this default patch and get it to the more kind of square wave style sound that we had in the project demonstration. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I said before, it's actually really easy to get to that. And all we need to do is kind of tweak this first VTO here. I'm going to go ahead and just put it on pulse wave 50 and put on the second VTO and pulse wave 50 as well. And then when we tweak up the fine tube there and kind of pull down on this one, we get kind of that detuned sound. And when they play together, those two pulse waves, they sound really, really nice. And they kind of gives it like that square wave style. And the next thing we need to do is come over and just start tweaking out the filtering system and some of the modulation sources. In this high pass filter here, I'm gonna pull up the cutoff just a little bit. And for the low, I'm gonna actually bring it down quite far. And I'm gonna send that one to envelope one. And for the age controls, let's just go ahead and boost it up a little bit. This is gonna to be to taste. It's not really gonna affect like the real output. It's just gonna add those glitches and detune bits to make it sound more old or more vintage. And for envelope one, it's pretty much good to go right out of the gate. Maybe we can turn up the velocity sensitivity. Let's turn up the velocity sensitivity of the other one too. I always like to do this whenever I have the option inside of a synthesizer, just because it's very easy to control inside of a MIDI clip, you know, the velocity, how, th how things are happening inside of a MIDI clip, or when you're actually just playing the piano, it's just a good idea to have them. I, it's very uncommon for me not to have some sort of velocity sensitivity control from a VS really the last thing we might want to do is modulate the low pass filter just a tiny bit And we're pretty much back to that original sound. If we go ahead and get back into the project, turn that new sound off and turn off the old one and unsolo it, and we can hear everything together, it should sound pretty much like it did in the beginning.
And it does. I mean, obviously, we can get in and start tweaking things out and making it a little bit better and a little bit closer if that's what we wanted to do. But the idea for these two tutorials is just to kind of get you started on moving away from that default patch into different styles of sounds. In the next tutorial, we'll be making a bass sound from that default patch as well. So let's jump into that. Okay, so in this portion of the tutorial part of this series, we're going to be making the bass patch found in the demo song I put together for this video series. This is what it sounds like. So what I've done is just duplicated that track. So I get the MIDI, the compressor is going to be on there anyway, just for that side chain. And what we're going to do is take a new instance of vacuum and drop it on the track so we can build that bass sound from the default patch. This is what the default patch sounds like out of the box. Nowhere near a bass. So let's jump into the project and start sculpting that sound. Okay, so like I said, we need to go from here to a bass sound. And all of the heavy work is gonna be done from VTO1. We're actually not gonna be using VTO2 because a bass sound, you generally only need one oscillator, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn VTO all the way down. And I'm gonna pull over just a little bit above pulse width 50 shape here. And I'm gonna drop it down a couple of octaves. Let's see where we're at. So we're close, right? Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is put a little bit of saturation on it because that never hurt anybody. And now we wanna roll off some of those extra high frequencies using the low pass filter. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it down. And we're pretty much good, right? The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is send it to envelope one so we can sculpt the sound even further. And what I'm gonna do is pull down the decay a little bit and boost up the release time and add a little bit of velocity sensitivity. Sounds pretty good, right? Again, I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation to the final output and boost up the volume. Now for the age, the drift and dust, I'm gonna leave them alone, but just know that they're there and they're unique to vacuum. So if you wanna go for an even grittier, more vintage feel, use those to taste. Let's jump into the second envelope, pull up the release there, and let's see how that sounds now. Sounded better. Let's modulate that. So using that LFO sounds pretty cool. But let's use this one instead. Original, where we are. If I pull down this volume right here, between the original and where we are right now, we're actually super close. I mean, it's gonna be difficult to get it exactly right, but I think for the most part, we know how to get from that default patch to a bass sound just by following the steps that we've outlined here. Essentially using that one VTO, a couple octaves down on a pulse width 50, and really then just adjusting the low pass filter and a little bit of modulation from the LFO. So let's go ahead and check it out in conjunction with the rest of the project and see how we did. Sounds pretty close. It's definitely bass. It's definitely not that default synth sound that we had before. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.